Right, I'm very happy to welcome Sonia Woodcock, a Sustainable Food Places Coordinator at Foodwise in Leeds to the Fever Studio. So lovely. So thank you very much, uh, Sonia, for, for, for joining us here at Fever Radio. And um, um, you're actually the founder of the organisation called Foodwise, aren't you? Well, yes, it's a food partnership um, in the city. And uh, yes, I would say that I started instigating it quite a number of years ago um, from a, a food growing network, Feed Leads, that I was part of. And together, the, the, that organisation really pushed forth to uh, have a food partnership for the city because we really wanted to change how food is accessed and um, produced in Leeds and, and eaten, really. Mm. And I mean, you said yourself just in the, the warm up to the show that, you know, you're from, um, you're from the west coast of, of Canada which has uh, um, a, a, a kind of a, a, a very focused kind of food culture around it where I'm, I'm assuming you, you have quite good, better quality food than we, than we, we have access to over here. Um, but you've also spent time over in, um, in China before mm-hmm. you finally landed over here in the UK as well. So very widely, widely traveled and a, an opportunity to experience foods from across the world as well and, and see the kind of food habits of people across the world. Absolutely. I think it's really important. I mean, we're a very multicultural city here in Leeds and we need to really reflect and benefit the uh, the different cultural foods that are available and uh, encourage people to eat more vegetables, really. <laughs> and so what what struck you about coming to Leeds um, and obviously, you know, in partnership with, with FoodWise, what strikes you about um, our, our food habits here in, in Britain compared to Canada, China, etc.? Yeah, unfortunately, I I think um, food habits haven't really moved on a lot here. And uh, there's a lot of comfort eating and sort of maybe more traditional heavy um, meat and potato type meals. And I think, you know, there is absolutely a world of uh, of food out there. And Mm. we just sort of need to shift and move to more towards that lighter, fresher eating and um, yeah. And I just think there's, there's real potential. There's a lot of really fantastic work happening across Leeds and there is this change happening and there's great things happening in the school food um, programme as well mm. um, to increase vegetable consumption. But I still think there's a long way to go. I think we need to make good food um, just a bit cooler and to be, <laughs> to be the thing to have. Mm. So let's just talk about, first of all, why is it important that people do eat lighter, fresher, less processed, more fruits, more vegetables. Why is that even important in the first place? Well, it's just so fundamental to health. Um, and right from, you know, from the first meals, from when we're being weaned, um, or throughout the life course, we need to be eating more vegetables and fruits because they've just got such important nutrients and, you know, minerals and vitamins that are, you know, essential for it to um, have optimal health. Mm. And it's also good for the environment as well. So um, let, um, we're thinking about the carbon impact of food. Fruits and vegetables have, have a lesser impact. It's interesting because we've, we've already, I mean, we understand today that there's um, so many benefits um, to the body within fruits and vegetables, so many vitamins, minerals, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but actually, I was just reading yesterday that, for instance, um, an apple, um, another part aspect of food that we don't understand so well yet, we're starting to understand better and better, is the, the part of antioxidants and phytochemicals, um, the things that give colour to fruits and, and vegetables. Um, and so, for instance, you know, we understand the activity of vitamin C, um, but vitamin C in an apple is only one one hundredth of its antioxidant activity. There's all these other compounds that are doing a myriad of different things that we don't fully understand yet, but we we understand that they're doing something good in the human body. So there's just, there's more and more coming in, you know, to back up the the reasons for eating more fruits and vegetables, isn't there? Absolutely. And we always encourage people to eat the rainbow. So eat a rainbow of colours because each different coloured fruit and vegetable has a different set of um, nutrients to it. Hmm. And also to consider the seasonality as well. And the colours often change with the seasons as Hmm. well. So if you think about in the autumn, there's lots of different sort of yellows and orange and red vegetables available. So it's really important to stock up then on those nutrients. Hmm. And then as we go into, you know, the winter and we've got those uh, that's stored in our bodies. Mm. It was a wonderful thing. We've got science now that can analyse these things and, and, and let us know what's within them. But actually, before we had science, we just had our eyes, didn't we? And we were attracted to all these different colours and, and variations thereof. Children in particular are just naturally driven towards very, very colourful things. OK, so great. So um, you're also here to talk to us about Healthy Start, aren't you? Yes, I am. And so what is Healthy Start? Well, Healthy Start is a benefit provided through NHS England. 
And um, it's to help families, low-income families, so pregnant women um, and children under the age of four, access fruit, vegetables, milk and um, infant formula. And um, it's a weekly payment that they receive if they sign up to the Healthy Start. And this just helps to ensure that they get those important nutrients at that most critical time in their life that will benefit them throughout their lives. Mm. So it's not, not, um, I I mistakenly said a a voucher, didn't I, earlier on, but it's it's actually a payment card um, where, you know, for a number of weeks um, and each and every week, you'd, you'd have a certain amount of pounds loaded up on that. And then you're free to go and spend that on milk, baby formula. Um, fruits and vegetables. Ab- like. Absolutely. So um, children under the age of one get £8.50 a week to spend, mm. which is, is really valuable. And then it's £4.25 um, for, for the other age groups. And um, so if you have a family can have multiple people that are eligible, so it all adds up. Mm. And it just helps to contribute to that, you know, the family basket um, of food. Um, we do know that uh, the cost of living crisis at the moment, many families are really struggling. And while this may not seem like a large amount of money to um, to add to the bill, but if we can spend that on that nutritious food each week, it really does go a long way. Mm, yeah, well, as we like to say in, the, in England, it's particularly in the north, every penny counts. Mm. So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay. And so, how how would somebody qualify? Um, or healthy start. Certainly. So, as I said, that uh, <clears throat> women who are from ten weeks of pregnancy um, can are, are eligible, and then once a child is born as well, what you need to do is go onto the NHS Healthy Start website and sign up. Um, so it is an online application, hmm. and um, you have to just be um, be sure about that. You put in your correct details with your correct address and everything. You also need to be in receipt of certain benefits. This is for um, low-income families. Um, if you're not sure if you qualify, just try. Go ahead and um, and see what comes back. Whether you're accepted. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. If you if you don't you don't try, you might you might never know. Yeah. I mean, talk to your midwife. Talk to your doctor. Talk to any frontline um, workers that you're. They, they will be aware of this. Um, benefit. Okay, so that's Healthy Starts. Um, it can be found online where exactly? At NHS. NHS, on, on the NHS website itself. Okay, great. And um, other things that you may be able to get using that card are things like vitamins as well um, and vitamin drops. So really the, the idea is that um, you know, you're able to get the necessary vitamins and minerals that you would normally get from from fruits and vegetables and if not, potentially from, <laughs> from, uh, from an artificial source like vitamin drops. Okay, great. Um, and also, I mean, the, the reason why we're also talking about this is the the take up for this hasn't been um, that great. Um, there's, the, the, you know, there's... Well, well, actually, I'm going to say in <laughs> in Leeds, we're actually above national average, okay. but we're you know in the early seventy percent range. Well so, done, Sonia. Yeah. <laughs> so there's um there's about thirty percent of people who are eligible for this um, benefit, not, not accessing it, and that's about a thousand people. Um, so that's quite significant. And um, this also has um, another impact as well. So that's about a million pounds not being spent a year in Leeds mm. on fruit, vegetables, right. milk. Sure, yeah, sure. so it's really important. This can be really important um, for small retailers as well. So local retailers can accept these um, Healthy Start vouchers. It's just like, um, sorry, payment cards. It's just like any other payment card, cash in, cash out. So there's real opportunities so there will actually be a campaign, an online campaign starting next week, running across the city. Um, Kirkgate Market is involved. We've got certain uh, retailers in there that are accepting Healthy Start. And they, off- they have um, uh, more affordable fruits and vegetables there as well. So it's really an opportunity to you know, look out across the community. You, mm. you, you may be benefiting or you may know somebody. You may be in a work position or you may be a small retailer as well that could benefit and support your local community. And it, you know it's really important to for us to to, to eat better, or certainly eat um, eat appropriately for our bodies, the the, the minerals, the vitamins, and and and, and the such like that that's required. Um, because we're seeing amongst um, poorer communi- communities in the UK, Sonia, who maybe have less access um, or disposable income to buy fresh fruits and vegetables. We see quite a difference in outcomes, don't we, in terms of life expectancy and illness for for what's typically been deemed the working class of the UK. Absolutely. And there's been, um, in in recent years as well, there's been a real increase in um, dental caries, so um, children's teeth rotting. Hmm. Um, And so it's really important. We really talk about this first thousand days and the importance of children having as much nutrition at that time because that sets them up for life. 
and it also helps to create healthy eating habits mm. uh, moving forward. So, I mean, this is um, this is where this um, benefit fits in. These children will then be picked up when they start school. They'll be picked up by the free school meals. Um, so they'll be continued to be looked after in that way. But it's just, we just don't want um, families missing out on this benefit. Mm. Or people suffering on needlessly just because the body's not getting what it deserves. I mean, the reason why with children who've who've, who've got a lot of dental caries, rotting teeth, um, is the reason. Do we think the reason is because they don't brush appropriately? Do we think the reason is because they they're eating too many sugary things? Or do we think the reason is that they're literally not getting enough minerals and the such like to build healthy teeth and gums? I would say it's all three. It's all three. Yeah, but and I, the, the sugars are really really bad. Mm. But if you if you don't have if your teeth are weaker because you haven't had as much nutrients beforehand, then the sugars will just enter and the acids will destroy your teeth. Mm. Um, and it, it's not just teeth. Um, having your teeth removed like that, then it, it, it just sort of sets up for um, health, imp- longer-term health impacts. Okay, so something we definitely want to steer clear of. Mm. All right, great. So it's the Healthy Start program. You can find out more on the NHS website. Um, it will give... Um, breastfeeding mothers or um, families where there's a child under the age of four uh, potentially access, so long as you qualify, um, access to fresh frozen tinned fruits and vegetables, fresh dried and tinned pulses, um, something that some number of the doctors that we've been interviewing say we don't get enough of in the UK, probably the one biggest food group that they they highlighted. Um, Also infant formula, uh, milk based on cow's milk and uh, also vitamins and vitamin drops. Um, are also available as as part of the package. Is there anything I missed out there, Sonia? No, I just think if you've got any questions, you know, speak to your health visitor or your midwife as a first point of contact or at your children's centre. Um, you know, all the professionals across Leeds are aware of this um, benefit and are there to help and advise and support you to sign up. Great. And also check out Foodwise, um, which is the organisation that Sonia is working for um, or working um, or, or I'm sorry, who actually um, formed the organisation of or in partnership. Um, so do check out Foodwise. There's lots of good information about what's going on um, around lifting the level of food that we have available to us in Leeds and making sure that people get the nutrition that they they require. So lots of good information on there. And Sonia, I really hope that you'll be able to come back and talk to us about all the things that you're uh, you're, you're you're planning in 2024 and beyond. I know there's a lot of things going on. Yeah, no, we'd love to because we'd just love to hear from uh, different communities as well and and how they can engage with our different campaigns. Lovely. It'd be a pleasure. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you.